Hello everybody, my name is Jody, and I'd like to welcome you to my new YouTube channel. I decided that after writing a blog called Yes, I'm Really Moving to Israel, it was time to take a look at it and see what I could do to keep it going. I hadn't written in two years, but it had done really well. People really seemed to like it and it really seemed to help people. So I thought, okay, you know what, let's do something new and why don't I do a YouTube channel because that way well, first of all, a lot of people haven't done this before for this exact topic. Plus, we can get into so many different things, and I can get to know you, and you can get to know me. I wanted to just kind of do an intro video just to tell you a little bit about uh, what I want to talk about and the different topics that we're going to cover. So, we're going to talk about what it was like to move, pick up your family and move, and, and, and come to a different country. I mean, Israel is one thing, but it's a different country altogether. I don't know the language. Still don't know the language that well, but that's a whole different topic. Anyhow, my son knows the language, and that's the most important. He went to school. He didn't know anything when he got there as far as Hebrew. He did all of his subjects in Hebrew, and he learned it because chick chuck like he's a kid, and he got it, and he loves it here. He's going to be 18 this month, so he'll be going to the Army. That's another thing we were going to talk about. But right now, I wanted to say to you that making Aliyah was the best thing that I did in my life. It was wonderful for me. And wonderful for everyone that, well, okay, not maybe my family in Canada. Hmm. They weren't so happy. I think they've adjusted the fact that we're happy, and so that makes them happy. At least I hope so. I also want you to know that uh, we picked an apartment. We weren't even in the country. We picked an apartment, and we had help, and there's so much help that can be offered to you. You just have to know where to go, who to ask. I want to be that person for you. I mean, I can't answer everything for you but if I don't know the answer I'm gonna find it out for you okay we're going to talk about all kinds of things what it's like to go grocery shopping for the first time the second time the third time let me tell you it's a challenge if you don't have someone to help you and you don't speak the language it is a challenge that's okay I'm here I'm gonna to try to help you I'm also going to tell you about the words that you need to know right off the bat because you know what there are things that you need to know like let's say for example you are in a restaurant you order, everything's good, you've found some way to communicate with the waiter, and you're having food, you're finished, and now in North America, we know, uh, you know what, chick chick, get out of here because the next table is, uh, someone's waiting for the next table, and the next seating is coming in, and we need you out of here, thank you very much. Here, you can sit and sit, and you will be at Cafe Cafe or Penguin, sitting in that restaurant for forever because you have not asked for the bill. If you don't ask for the bill, you don't get the bill. And that's something we're not used to. We think they're going to come and bring the bill, and then we're going to go, no, 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 you must ask for the bill. And don't say excuse me because they won't answer you. I've tried that. Excuse me, uh, excuse me, waiter, uh, no. Slicha is what you want to learn. This is a word that I needed to know. You need to know this word. You need to know sablanut, patience. These are words that you need to know right away. My pronunciation may suck, but you get the idea. There are things that you need to know before you get here. So when you get here, you will be prepared for the little things. The big things, everything will fall into place. With help, with friends, Israelis are really nice and warm people, and they're going to help you. Your neighbors are going to help you. Sometimes, even if you don't ask, they're going to help you. Okay, so moving on, because I don't want to leave this video as being a really long video, just an intro. We're going to talk about things like... Um, Cosmetic products. Women, when you get here, before you come, make sure you buy waterproof mascara and extra to sell it to your friends or give it to your friends because, I don't know, I like to swim in the sea every day, but somehow waterproof mascara seems to escape the Israelis. It's not really good. It's not really waterproof. And it's a lot of money. We know we can walk into any drugstore in North America, pick up a waterproof mascara in the dollar store. No, can't do it here. And can't even do it for $20 maybe 40 or 50 dollars and you're talking about a huge amount of shekels yes that's how much it costs sometimes to get waterproof mascara okay that's not everything you can get creams and dead sea stuff here way cheaper than you can in north america and so we are surrounded and lucky to have that kind of thing but the type of things that you and i look for on an everyday basis that we want to just walk into store and get and it's not expensive i'm going to teach you we're going to learn together because you're going to ask me questions. You're going to say to me, uh, Jody, what did you do when you needed this? Where did you find such and such? Okay. Another thing I learned was 
when we first got here, when we first got here, so much paperwork, right? Tons of paperwork. Well, if you don't have someone to guide you, which bank to go to, things like that, you don't know. You end up in some big bank, swallow it up. You need to find a small bank that's close to you, that they care about you, that they speak a little English. Always make sure there's an English speaker there that wants to speak English, okay? Because the, hi, oh, welcome, welcome, you're going to do so well is great if they follow through with it. After they sign you up, it may not follow through. All of a sudden, they forget that they spoke English. But that's not in all cases. That's a very rare percentage of people. Most people want to speak English, and sometimes it's detrimental because when you are learning a language and you want to speak it, let me tell you, the minute I open my mouth and I say one word, one little word, they know I'm an English speaker, so they start to speak to me in English. This makes it really hard to learn the language, besides that I've worked only in organizations that are English speakers, mostly, spoken to English speakers as my friends. Then I try to speak Hebrew and right away they answer me in English because they want to use their English, which is great. Let's teach each other, but please let me speak Hebrew and fumble through until I get it right. Anyhow, we'll do that. I'll help you. Opan will help you. I'll tell you about Opan and what that was like, how I kind of didn't finish it, but the whole other story. Twice I didn't finish it. But things got in the way. What can I do? I figure I'm going to be here for the rest of my life. I'm going to learn Hebrew eventually, right? Uh, I hope so. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. We're going to talk about all kinds of different subjects. Anything you want to talk about, write in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And again, thank you. Chag Sameach. Shabbat Shalom. One of the things in Israel, it's always going to be a holiday. Chag Sameach is always good. And Shabbat Shalom always comes every week, so you can always say that. Strangers will say this to you. It's very nice. It's very warm. And I love it. And I love you guys. Thanks for listening, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.